The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, eighth chapter, text number forty-eight, given by His Divine Grace, A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on October twenty-eighth, nineteen seventy-four, in Mayapur, India. King Yudhishthira said, O oh my lot, I am the most sinful man. Just see my heart which is full of ignorance. This body, which is ultimately meant for others, has killed many, many phalanxes of men. Ohomi Pasata Pasata Agyanam Ridi Ruram Duratmanaha Parakas Parakas Seva Dehasa Babho me akho hini hata. <coughs> so, Yudhishthir Maharaj says that this body is meant for others. It is others' body. Everyone should be interested for his own body. Who is interested for other's body? I eat for maintenance of my body, not that your body. It is the very good argument given by Vidhisthira Maharaj that first of all ascertain whether it is your body. He, for the bodily sense gratification, satisfaction, we are committing so many sinful lives. But first of all, consider whether this body is yours. Now, first of all, consideration is this body is given by the father and mother. So, actually the body be, belongs to the father and mother. Or, just like the slaves, they uh, sell their body to the master. If somebody if maintains your body, then it becomes the body belongs to him. Suppose you are working somewhere and he is giving you money for maintaining your body, then actually the body is maintained for the person who gives me payment. You see, so many people are going to the other side of the river, very running very quickly, to go there, because the body is sold to that master who is paying for eating. Otherwise, why is taking the body there? So, uh, <clears throat> actually the body uh, belongs to other, and spiritually the body begins to uh, be, belongs to Krishna. But when you forget our relationship with Krishna, the body belongs to somebody else. That's a fact. Then we think that the body uh, <coughs> belongs to my father and mother or this or that. Sometimes we do not think that. So why, from material point of view, if the body does not belong to me, why shall I commit so much, so many sinful activities <coughs> for others? So, Dudish Maharaj is repentant that parakasya eva dihasya mabho me akhoini hata. Many uh, hundreds and thousands 
of soldiers, horses, elephants, men or oh, yeah, killed. Of Kohini, there is a calculation, sixty-four thousand elephants, sixty-four thousand horses, and sixty-four thousand uh, like that exactly I cannot. But sixty some of the items are sixty-four thousand chariots. Uh, one and nowadays it is called uh, exactly uh, a group of soldiers. What is called? Uh, Phalanx and another name is there. Uh, no. Hmm? What is that? Tradition? Division. One division. One division of army consisting of so many horses, so many uh, elephants, chariots, there are different types of fighters. Somebody would fight from the uh, back, riding on the back of the elephant, somebody on horses, that is also nowadays current, cavalry, and somebody on chariot, somebody standing, infantry. So one of Khoini means sixty-four thousand elephants, horses, chariot, and so many thousand infantry. That we can makes one division. So Krishna himself gave so many divisions to Yudhyadha. Altogether there are eighteen divisions, or more than that. They are all killed. So actually a sane man is thinking that after all the idea was that I should be uh, enthroned on this chair or this throne of the kingdom, and for me uh, so many uh, animals and men were killed. <coughs> Here it is mentioned, yes. A solid phalanx of twenty-one thousand eight hundred and seventy chariots, twenty-one thousand eight hundred and seventy Elephants, one hundred and nine thousand six hundred and fifty infantry, and sixty-five thousand six hundred cavalry is called a oxen. Such eighteen divisions of soldiers were there on one side, <coughs> and many oxenes were killed on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Maharaj Yudhishthir, as the most pious king of the world, takes for himself the responsibility of killing such a huge number of living beings because the battle was fought to reinstate him on the throne. This body is, after all, meant for others. While there is life in the body, it is meant for the service of the other and it is dead, it is meant to be eaten up by the dogs and jackals. Even that is dead body, that is also meant for others. If you throw it eh, on the street, then it will be eaten by the animals and the vultures, so body is meant for others. Eh? Or if you don't throw, if you burn it, then it is the right of the sons to burn it then it belongs to them. So either living or dead, logically, the body belongs to others. And another logic is, who is interested to maintain a body which belongs to others? This is logic. <clears throat> and the other point is that everyone is maintaining this body with so many sinful activities, 
although the body does not belong to him. <clears throat> so, real sanity is to understand that this body belongs to Krishna. We are misunderstanding that this body belongs to my father and mother or my master or to the cats and dogs or the vulture in so many ways. That is material. Materially we can understand that. But spiritually this body belongs to Krishna. Because the body is meant to, uh, uh, I mean to say, prepared uh, <clears throat> by the eight elements. We have got the five elements, bhumi, rapa, nala, vayu. There is earth, water, air, fire. And the mind and the intelligence and the false ego, this is the eight combination of the matter. Then the uh, matter being agitated, they are our uh, ten senses, uh, and then sense objects. In, the, in this way, this body is composition of twenty-four elements. <coughs> but all these elements, Krishna says, the bhinna me prakriti astadha, that is my energy. This body is made by Krishna's property. Earth, water, the air, fire, this is all Krishna's property. Uh, you cannot create earth or you cannot create water, you cannot create a sky, you can, nothing of the material elements. It is created by Krishna and this body is this external body is made of these eight elements. Similarly, I am also Krishna's. Aparayam mitasya vidhi me prakitiṁ para jīva bhūta. Me para prakiti jīva bhūta. Jīva, the living entity, they are para prakiti, superior energy, but that is also me, mine. So I, as Aung Brahma is me, uh, because Krishna is absolute, in that sense, I, the energy of Krishna <coughs> and Krishna, we are one. Uh, Aung Brahma is me means that. Hmm? Or I belong to Krishna. The Mahabadi thinks that I have become Krishna. No. The Vaishna philosophy is that I am Krishna's property. Not that I become Krishna. <clears throat> That's why the part and parcel of my body, this finger, the finger can claim that I, uh, I am part and parcel of the body, but the finger cannot claim that I am the whole body. That is not possible. <clears throat> so actually, uh, our body belongs to Krishna, and I also belong to Krishna. Hmm. The parakya, in both senses, uh, it belongs to Adar. Adar means Krishna. <coughs> so, uh, logically, both the body, mind, intelligence, and myself, everything should be engaged but Krishna's interest, <coughs> that is real knowledge, that is real knowledge. Krishna says that khetra gancha vimang vidhi sarva khetra isu bharat. He is also khetra I am khetra uh, because I possess this body. And the body is khetra, the field of activities. Uh, just like here, the cultivators, they have got, each one of them have got some land, and they are producing food grains or any other products according to his ability and capacity, and he is enjoying it. 
this property. Therefore, he is called Khetraga or Khetri. The field is called Khetra and the owner is called Khetri or Khetra. Khetraga means that cultivator knows that this earmark land is mine. Khetraga. It belongs to me. So actually, this field does not belong to him. It belongs to the government. Because he has to pay collect tax to the collector. So actually, land does not belong to him. It belongs to the government. Similarly, where is the difficulty to understand that although I am cultivating this body, karma, uh, I will, taking this body as my uh, field of activities, we are doing work. Everyone can understand it. But uh, finally, this body belongs to Krishna, as this land belongs to the government. Therefore Krishna claims, khetra gancha bhi vidhi uh, as there are in cities two taxes, occupier tax and owner's tax, <coughs> rented house. Actually the house belongs to the landlord, but <coughs> the tenant also claims this is my house. But finally the house belongs to the landlord. So Krishna claims the same example, as a piece of land, some bigas of land, belongs to a certain person, he can claim, this is my land. Similarly, other man can claim, it is my land, other can claim, my, my land, but all these lands belong to the government. <clears throat> Similarly, I claim this is my body, you claim it is your body, he claims it is his body, but ultimately the all bodies becomes to Krishna. This is clear understand. Where is the difficulty to understand that everything belongs to Krishna? Ishavasam uh, idam sadvam. Everything belongs to Krishna. <clears throat> Hmm. So, uh, this is knowledge. Uh, this is knowledge, and when you come to the right knowledge, uh, after many, many births, uh, even Maharaj is still, of course, he is playing the part of ordinary man, pious man. Pious man is also not perfect. Uh, Yudhisthi Maharaj should have uh, thought like this, that yes, this body does not belong to me, but it belongs to Krishna, and Krishna desired that with this body there must be fighting for his satisfaction. Uh, <clears throat> so Arjun thought like that. Uh, Arjun thought like that. There was, Arjun is higher great devotee than Yudhisthi Maharaj. Uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj has got personal consideration. When Krishna advised him that you go to Dronacharya and speak this lie, that his son Asatthama is dead, otherwise he will not die. He go and speak. So he hesitated. And he said, how is that? I never spoke lie. How can I go and say the lie? So, this personal consideration is there, that if I speak lies, then I will be sinful, and I will be punished, and so on, so on. Uh, but if a devotee does not think like that. Maybe it is sinful, but it will satisfy Krishna, I must do it. This is devotee's decision. Just like Krishna sometimes became sick. So, in Dwarka, you have seen that play in Bombay. 
and so many physician came nobody could cure him then krishna suggested his own medicine that if some of my devotees will give the dust of his feet on my head then i will be cured so <clears throat> the first devotee in narada and others or everywhere uh it was approached that give your dust of feet krishna is suffering no no how can i give uh, my uh, dust of feet see is krishna is supreme personality of god is huh? <clears throat> but when uh, the gopis were approached when they heard that uh, krishna is sick and he is in urgently necessity of uh, the dust of his devotees feet see immediately they began to give. take it take it take it Hmm. Uh, they did not consider that giving the dust of my feet to Krishna, I shall go to hell. Never mind, I shall go to hell. It doesn't matter. But can let Krishna be cured? That is first consideration. Uh, so this is the topmost devotee. Prepared to do anything without any consideration. Hmm. That is devotee. On navila sita sunnam. Anukulena Krishna nu silano. There should be no personal desire. Uh, there should be zero. Annamila asita sunnam gyan karmadana. Simply, uh, one should try to please Krishna. Uh, there is no other concern. Only to satisfy Krishna. Uh, that is pure bhakti. Uh, <coughs> Hmm. Uh, that is explained by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Bhavusatmika buddhi reke ha kuru nandana. Bhavusata janantasya buddhi abhyavusayana. This is perfect conclusion that I shall execute the desire of Krishna. Uh, but Krishna is not physically present before me then how i shall know what krishna desires that is not very difficult krishna's representative is there the spiritual master if you fulfill the desire of the spiritual master then you fulfill the desire of krishna just sab prasadat bhagavat prasad that is stated by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, if you please your spiritual master, then you know that I have pleased Krishna. Jasya prasadat bhagavat prasad. Jasya aprasadat nagati kutopi. If you displease your spiritual master, then you are nowhere. Your position is lost. Therefore, yesterday we were explaining the ten kinds of offenses Out of ten kinds of offenses, the serious offense is guru of agnya, disobedience of the order of guru. This is the verdict of the shastra. Krishna is helping us in so many ways. He comes personally to help us to deliver us from these clutches of Maya. And he advises, Sarvadhan maan paritajya maame kang sararangbaja. And when he is not physically present, he keeps Bhagavad Gita left by him so that others may read and take advantage of the sublime instruction of Krishna. So, he is helping us from within. Buddhi yogam gadamitha. From within, tini brahma rida. These statements are there in the shastras. He expounded the Vedic knowledge, rida, from the heart. Brahma means Vedic knowledge, sabda brahma, to brahma, because at that time there was nobody to instruct him. The how he got the instruction of Vedas. 
బికాస్ కృష్ణ ఇన్ ఎ స్టాక్చర్ కృష్ణ అయితే చతుర్ము హాయ్ కృష్ణ సేవనుము భక్తినాథ్ ఠాకూర్ గారు చతుర్ముఖ్ మీన్స్ బ్రహ్మ సో బీయింగ్ ఇన్ ఎస్ట్రాక్టెడ్ బై కృష్ణ బ్రహ్మ వి క్యామ్ మన ఇన్క్లైన్ టు సార్ కృష్ణ దర్ ఫర్ హీ హాస్ రిటన్ బ్రహ్మ సంగీత్ గోవిందం ఆది పురుషం తమహం భజామి హీ అండర్స్టాండ్స్ హియర్ ఇస్ ఆది పురుష్ ఐ ఆమ్ ది ఓన్లీ క్రీచర్ నా విత్ ఇన్ ది యూనివర్స్ సో I am getting instruction from Krishna. Hrida, hmm? from my heart. So Krishna, when instructs from within the heart, he is called Chaitya Guru. And that Chaitya Guru is expanded uh, by the uh, process, um, personal presentation of spiritual master. So both ways he is helping us. Krishna is so kind. Guru Krishna Kripa. Krishna is helping from within. But sometimes we are so dull, naturally, uh, that we cannot understand. Therefore, he sends his representative to instruct externally. So he is helping internally and externally. Uh, there is no difference. between the internal and external uh, instruction, and we should take advantage of uh, this instruction. And that is called Vyavasadmika Buddhi, fixed up uh, resolution. Fixed up resolution. Uh, if we become fixed up in this resolution, that whatever we have heard from my Guru, the representative of Krishna, Uh, I must execute it. I do not care for my personal convenience or inconvenience. Oh. This is my life and so then your life is perfect. Uh, then uh, your life is. If I make some amendment, addition, alteration uh, in the name of Krishna or Guru, uh, then it is for uh, No. We should receive the instruction as it is, especially uh, Krishna says, uh, just like Krishna says to Yudhishthir, go and speak the lie. And he speaks to Ajun that Yudhasa, Mahamanusma, you would fight. So not the instruction is the same to everyone. Krishna knows. who is capable to do something particular. Uh, and similarly, Guru also knows. So it is not that the same instruction is given to all. There may be, because variety. It is not impersonalism, one kind of. No. Variety. Uh, Krishna is Anandama. Anandama means variety is the mother of enjoyment. Unless there are varieties, how there can be ananda? Oh, Krishna is Satchidananda. So, Krishna's business is variety. Uh, the Mayavadi, they cannot understand. They simply understand that we are one. No. Varieties. Chintamani prakara sadmasu kalpa vrikha lakha vrte susura bhi rabhi palen. Uh, Krishna is enjoying varieties. Uh, he is living in the Chintavan, Dham. There are Surabhi. He is tending, tending the cows. Uh, he is playing with the coward boy. He is making jokes with the gopis. Uh, he is enjoying the company, varieties. He is becoming the son, dependent son, Mother Jasoda. Uh, So Krishna is variety. Without variety there cannot be enjoyment. So therefore, uh, variety of instruction also. So that is given by the spiritual master. You do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. And because Krishna is not uh, one-sided. Uh, so as... Uh, <coughs> 
confidential representative of Krishna, uh, we have to follow the instruction of the spiritual master. Uh, as it is given particular to me, I should execute without any personal consideration. That is the perfection of life. Uh, because after all, this body is meant for Krishna, the mind is meant for Krishna, the I am also Krishna's part and part is also parakasaiva. <coughs> Everything belongs to somebody else. The finally, that somebody else is Krishna. Uh, so if we fix up our mind on the lotus feet of Krishna and serve him, and then our life is perfect. Thank you very much.